So, my name's uh, Mel Whitten. I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. I've been here uh, at Hamcom a number of times. Always enjoy it. Uh, worked down here in Texas up at Alliance for a number of years, so a little bit familiar uh, with the area. Welcome everybody. I'm going to just I'll give some of these cards and pass around for those. Most of the people have got them, but if you haven't, uh, just hold your hand up if you haven't got a card. Somebody will get it passed over there to you. Okay, in about another minute or two here, we'll get going. Uh, I got started just about, uh, I don't know, two and a half years or so ago. And for over a year, I kind of didn't know what I was doing, to be honest with you. Uh, it was quite a learning experience. It's a fairly steep learning curve because it basically it's all new uh, technology, uh, at least for ham radio operators anyway. So, uh, but it's very interesting and it does use some technology that's been around for quite a while as well, like HDMI and MPEG for compression, which is what made uh, digital television possible. So we'll get started here. It's called digital video broadcasting. I know broadcasting is not a word that we use in ham radio, but it's a uh, it's a standard for uh, broadcast, and it has uh, it's been adapted for amateur radio, and it's uh, I think it works quite well. So today we'll talk a little bit about uh, what uh, DVB is and uh, why it was chosen for a uh, uh, digital ATV, and I'll show you a, a PC a USB dongle and software that uh, will run DATV, and also some standalone transmitters and receivers. And uh, important thing today I like to go over because you really need it with this is uh, some type of interface. Uh, it's a, uh, and I'll go in, in depth on uh, how to build one of those. And then how to configure a station, and then some online uh, resources where to go for a DVB-T. And if all works out well, we'll have a demo. <laughs> so, uh, so what's DVB-T? Uh, DVB-T is a yeah, trustable version of digital video broadcasting. It's a uh, TV system that was developed back in the UK in uh, 1998. It uses modern compression techniques. That's uh, MPEG, H265C advanced video coding, which is what our uh, a vestigial sideband system uses here, ATSC in the U.S. as well. But these are modulation schemes that are very uh, efficient and they're able to deliver both standard and uh, HD video. So why would hams want to use it? Well, what really got me going on it was we can do high definition, 1920 by 1080 pixels. You know, that's what you see on your television today. It's very robust in weak signal conditions, uh, uses less power and uh, less spectrum than our old uh, NTSC 6 megahertz. You can use up to 6 megahertz, but for uh, just sending a, uh, a 1080p picture, you can get it clear down to just 2 megahertz wide. And it's uh, readily available low-cost uh, hardware uh, from our friends over in China. And it uses this open broadcast standard EN300-744. Uh, and that's important that it's open. Bec uh, because of that, that has allowed the company I'm going to be talking about to be able to modify it for narrower bandwidths down to one megahertz now uh, versus six, which gives it a lot more robustness for uh, working the DX on the ATV. Uh, so some a little bit of history. Before the 90s, it just wasn't technically or economically possible to digitize TV. Uh, we didn't have the processing power, and we didn't have we had the memory, but it was very expensive, uh, and we didn't have the compression techniques that we needed. So it would have taken a, a signal 30 or 40 megahertz uh, wide to be able to do uh, digital television. So that wasn't going to work. So finally, Japan, Europe, and uh, the U.S., they threw a lot of money into this to develop uh, TV because they saw money in it. Follow the money, right? 
And they, they figured, well, we can get up to six stations in the same bandwidth, the six megahertz, say. More advertising, more shows, etc. So, so the motion picture expert group, MPEG, uh, they developed these standards, MPEG 1, 2, and later 4. And then the uh, European launching group, uh, Europe CLG, they defined the standard uh, for digital video broadcasting in uh, 1993. And by the late 90s, there were three uh, variances of that, and now there's, there's five or six of them. And then later came MPEG-4 and H.264, which was specifically developed for HDTV, because the more and more bits, you got to be able to compress them to keep them in a bandwidth that we'd be able to use on our frequencies. Uh, DirecTV DISH uh, uses DVB, and they have a later version called uh, S2 which is probably what you're seeing if you have a dish now. And a, uh, ATSC, you can see, is only in the U.S. They got a, f a few of our neighbors to use it. Uh, but the rest of the world is basically uh, uh, digital video broadcasting. It has over a billion users uh, worldwide. There's more than 200 companies involved in it. And it uses a modulation technique uh, uh, that's used in a lot of other different services as well. The U.S. is only one that uses this uh, 8 VSB8 uh, vestigial sideband. But they will be changing to uh, the same type of modulation that uh, DVB uses in a later version of the ATSC broadcast standard here for the U.S. I'm not sure I'm going to live long enough to see it, but. Uh, it's already been a, it's a candidate. The FCC recognized it, so eventually I think we'll see it. So here's your DVB-T signal advantage. As, you, as we saw in the old analog days, uh, it took a P5 picture uh, before you had, uh, you know, the best video. Uh, what we have found with uh, digital video broadcasting is if we can get uh, equivalent to a P2 signal, which is very snowy, on uh, an analog signal, we've got a good locked picture clear down here. So, see, there's a big advantage here, especially in uh, working DX. Of course, this all depends, too, on the parameters that are set up for uh, digital video broadcasting. There's a bunch of different ways you can configure it, whether you want robustness or you want uh, very high definition over multiple channels. So, here's what the signal looks like. Uh, Walter and some people that are on uh, digital voice may recognize this flat top signal. A lot of carriers in here. Uh, with OFDM, uh, they have a, a lot of carriers carrying a very low bit rate. Uh, but of course, to do uh, several megabits, which is required for a digital video, you got to have a lot of carriers in here. And instead of using like 16 that we use for digital voice, uh, there's about there's a two modes, a 2K and an 8K mode, and the 2K mode has about 1,700 carriers, and the, uh, the 8K mode has 7,000 and something. There's a lot of, uh, they're not all useful. Well, that wasn't very useful. You'll find it in the Okay. There we go. Uh, they have a lot of scattered, what they call scattered plots for, for synchronization spread throughout these. Uh, anyway, that's the flat top signal, rectangular looking like that, uh, very, uh, about 40 to 45 dB here down to the noise level. So uh, as long as you're running uh, class A amplifiers, you can uh, make a signal like this for a digital voice or digital uh, TV. Otherwise, these, they call these the skirts will fly out here uh, because of distortion and IMD. And uh, we don't want that, obviously, because then our signal would be way too wide. However, only running uh, 2 to 4 megahertz, and we got a 6 megahertz allocation, the DXers have found that they can run uh, class uh, B and even C amplifiers and spread these out and still not uh, cause what they call inter interference uh, between the carriers. And as a result, they've been able to work, you know, 100, 150 miles or more with uh, digital TV. So, what's the basic uh, digital ATV station? Of course, you've got to have a transmitter and receiver. Uh, something like this I'll show you and uh, some pictures of. 
Uh, we run about 10 watts. Uh, that's 10 watts of Class A power. Uh, that's equivalent to about 60 or 70 watts uh, in NTSC uh, analog. Needs some type of relay to switch between transmit and receive, and some type of a webcam. We found this uh, Logitech uh, C920 to work quite well, or you can use the one built in your laptop. And if you're using a transmitter and receiver that has HDMI input and output, uh, a Sony or a cam, uh, Canon camcorder work very, very well. And uh, most of the guys use Yagi's, uh, and most of them are on 70 centimeters, but there are guys on 23 centimeters as well. And it's always good to have a PC, uh, HDMI output, uh, video output, uh, if you're using uh, a transmitter receiver that has HDMI. So that's the basic station. So where do we get this gear where, and where do you find it? Uh, it's been, um, they, I don't know how long this company has been in business, but a number of years. It's called High Des. They make a lot of equipment for the security people. Any time that you would want to send, say, a digital video picture to a bunch of receivers, say, in a, a big, large area, but you don't want to run cables to it, you can put one of these receivers at each uh, television, and then you can broadcast to all of them uh, simultaneously. Uh, they make a lot of different products, uh, not just for ham radio, uh, but, but for the industry that uses uh, a video like this. There's hundreds of them. But what we found uh, was one that they developed uh, for ham radio, actually they have it for commercial use as well, is this UT100B. And the advantage of, of it, uh, it goes down to uh, a receive and transmit frequency down to uh, two megahertz uh, bandwidth. So that gives us our robustness. Uh, it has what was called MCX connectors on the back here, just uh, plugs into your uh, computer and then there are control programs that uh, run this. But uh, within this uh, module, uh, it's, it's got a full duplex uh, modulator demodulator built in. It's got a few milliwatts of output. It's a full hardware implementation of the broadcast standard that I mentioned. And it's very frequency agile. You can see from 50 to 950. Uh, uh, and then up to 1200 to 1350 megahertz, and that's in one kilohertz step. So you can go anywhere in, in those bands. Of course, obviously here in the U.S. we have to rely on the rules where, where we operate, but it's still frequency agile for all of those. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing that, folks, but... Hmm. Huh. Yeah, all right, so... I'll pass this around. I'd like to get it back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't get too worried about the uh, connector on the back. I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Uh, those are uh, very commonly found in a low cost. So what's the software that works with it? Uh, there's a number of software. This is all free that comes with that uh, module. The uh, Broadcast Driver Architecture, BDA, a uh, viewer sends a, receive, a receiver and also record. It's got a you know, built-in DVR onto your receiver. Uh, transport uh, TS player that sends streams of audio uh, uh, in file in a file format, and uh, they give you a media to transport stream uh, converter. So if you have like an MPEG file, then you can convert it to a, a TS file and then play it uh, over the air. Uh, and then there's others, there's uh, another trans, uh, trans, for the transmitter here, you can transmit and record uh, from uh, cameras and from your PC desk desktop. And being able to transmit 1080p, your desktop, to your other uh, station that you're working, hey, that's great. He can see anything and just as well as what you can see on your desktop. Uh, a lot of times if somebody has been sending me my desktop and I'm looking at it and all of a sudden I've, you know, I'm hearing my mouse and I'm trying to click on their desktop. <laughs> I mean, it's, that, it's that good. So, uh, TS Capture, there's a program that just captures uh, these transport files. Uh, once they're captured, then you can play them back. And VLC, which is a media player, the Video Land Client, that's free software, open source for for I, th I think about everything you can think of. 
Well, with it and uh, Windows 10 CAM software, and I think Windows 8.1 as well, uh, that works quite well too as a uh, media player. So, uh, Here's the camera, you may have seen this. Uh, this is a very popular camera. They've sold untold tens of thousands of these things. And I've seen them down to Amazon down to $60. This is the one I would recommend. It, it says 1080p and yes, it can go that high uh, with their software running it off of the desktop, but normally it's just 720 by 480, but it's still a very good camera. Uh, 16 by 9. Uh, here it is on um, Amazon, 59.99. Uh, here's using the uh, DVB T uh, UT100 just plugged in here, and here's this interface over here I'll talk about. So, just two cables running from it, and uh, you're ready to go. You really don't need anything else, but what you're looking at right there. Uh, with software and a built-in camera, uh, you're there. And you've got a lot of content, of course, with your computer because you can send anything, run any programs, and send those uh, over the air. Are those SM, SMA? Right? No, those are MCX connectors. MCX. They're a little bit smaller yet. Do they come with the, uh, with the unit? Uh, no, they don't, but I'll show you where to get them, and they're real cheap. Okay. <laughs> I, I know... That's, I should have passed this around, but uh, this is what they look like. You can buy them in pigtails like this for three or four bucks. And they're on Amazon as well as uh, eBay. Yeah, I'm not asking anybody to try to crimp those on there. It can be done, you know, but they are small. So here's a basic system. Uh, if you didn't, just to get started, all you need is something to switch from transmit and receive, and you wouldn't even need to do that if you had two antennas, because this thing will run full duplex. Power supply, really need an RF amp. However, I have, with a high gain antenna, I've worked 15 miles with just that dongle. So, I mean, it's, it's possible to do it. Uh, so, you know, transmit and receive, I'm just switching here. Boy, this is aggravating. What polarization do you use? Pardon me? Uh, most of us run horizontally polarized, you know, because there's less noise, less man-made noise. But you can run vertical as well, and there are repeaters that are running vertical. And that's, we're going to initially, uh, we're building a repeater in St. Louis, and we're going to try to run uh, vertical. Because we know a lot of people have uh, dual band comets, and uh, what's the other one, diamonds. So, uh, to get more people involved and I'll show you an, another even cheaper way to do it. We're going to go vertically. If it doesn't work out, we'll go back to horizontal. But, uh, here are just some shots of uh, some pictures from uh, the UT100 and the software. There is some configuration software. Obviously, you have to tell it what bandwidth, uh, what frequency you're going to be on, uh, how much forward error correction, what constellation, what modulation you're going to use, and etc. I won't go into that now. That's a whole other presentation on the setup. Uh, but there is support for all of this. Uh, with that, you get about, I don't know, a 20-page manual, and it, it highlights uh, how to set this up for a ham radio use. So, uh, the other one, next one I want to talk about um, is what I call their T line. Collins had their S line. <laughs> Hydas has got their T line. So uh, here they are. There's a uh, this is the DVB-TH HV120. Uh, this is their receivers. There's a couple of different models of that. They run from 169 to uh, 209. But they're, I mean, the, the whole, the, you got to remember, everything's in these packages. You don't need any other peripherals. It's all right here. So here's their uh, receiver up here. I've slashed out no PC. Actually, this one runs off of a uh, uh, little OSD right here. But, uh, you set your whole receiver up with this. So they've got, uh, if you were to buy one of these now, they've got a new, a uh, little bit larger uh, remote than this one here. But this one allows you to control the receiver. And also, uh, you can control the transmitter, uh, push to talk. Uh, as well with, with this recorder here and change frequency uh, with the arrows. It's got some buttons up here as well to change frequencies. 
Uh, you can see the HDMI connector, and it's also got uh, NTSC over here. Uh, so you can, if you're into uh, ATV right now, you can plug in your NTSC camera right here and also your line in audio and it will do the conversion to uh, the digital video broadcasting but of course at a lower resolution but it will work, you know, to get you started but uh, HDMI is the way to go, there's just, that, that, that works quite well. This last connector on here is, is connected to their universal receiver an an receiver transmitter uh, inside for controlling uh, the processor, but uh, they, they give you a USB to uh, uh, U uh, TTL converter to plug in here. So it, the controls through the, um, the PC with the software program they provide for it. Uh, so it's full 1080 by 1920 uh, using this high compression system here. Same as we use here in uh, uh, ATSC. As I mentioned, it has an additional ADD input for NTSC, uh, down to one megahertz on transmit. Uh, they don't have, a, they have a two, uh, one megahertz receiver, but it's not quote out yet. It's a UT160 and it should be available probably in another or month or so. And the guys that be interested in this would be, would be obviously be the DXers that are interested in just getting that picture sent and getting their grid square, you know, that, that, you know those, those kind of guys. I mean, they can send still pictures, basically what they're doing. But there won't be a lot of uh, frame refresh when you get down to one megahertz. There will be some. I mean, you can have movement, but it won't be like uh, full motion that you have at the, at the higher bandwidths. Well, Walter, what's causing this? Get back. <laughs> 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 Just give us a break once in a while. Uh, again, real wide frequency range. This, this uh, transmitter, and I'll pass these around, uh, it goes up to uh, 2.4 gigahertz, so you have a, a lot of range on them. Very small packages, as you can see, run off of 12 volts. Um, they do have an optional 100 milliwatt amplifier, uh, but you're going to pay more money for it, obviously. Uh, I'll show you one in, in a moment that uh, I really recommend for amplifier. So they have a very effective uh, channel coding, uh, which combats uh, multipath, which uh, is really a problem, of course, in the terrestrial, but it works quite well. Uh, here's a, a snapshot of the on-screen display. Where this is an area here where you would scan for the frequency. Once you scan the frequency, then it'll save it in memory, and you can have, I don't know, half a dozen or so of those. Uh, the multimedia down here is like a DVR, you know. Again, what, what HiDes did, they took a lot of their, their commercial software and they modified it for uh, ham radio use, and it works, you know, it works just fine. Uh, you can do updates in firmware. On the front there, you, you might have seen a, uh, a connector that's a micro SD on the receiver, you can record to that micro uh, SD, plug it in your PC and play it back that way. Of course you can play it back uh, through the receiver as well. Uh, uh, here's the uh, what we call a transmitter configuration and here's where you'd pick uh, your encoding type like H264. Uh, this, it senses down here it says uh, system info and source info, what your uh, video uh, input is, whether it be 1920 or 480 or 720 or whatever. It has a wide range of different video inputs that uh, you can transmit. The maximum bit rate uh, is up to 8,000, but the higher that bit rate is, obviously, the wider bandwidth you're going to have to have or a higher constellation to be able to transmit uh, at that, that higher bit rate. Uh, it's got MPEG-2 audio. It's rather high bit rate too, 192, but uh, that can be changed, but I haven't noticed ever a need to do that. That's all just uh, automatic. I mean, I haven't had any issues at all with sound. Sound's always perfect, and it's full stereo, you know, high definition. I mean, it's great. Here's a Canon camcorder that's very similar like the one I'm using. I found these on uh, Amazon or eBay, refurbished. 
Uh, always worked well for me. Uh, this one was about 90 bucks. Again, it's got HDMI output uh, 1080p. And of course, once you have a camera, there's a lot of things you can do with it, recording as well. I would recommend if you get a camera though, in the morning, of course, the camera's going to be facing at you or the station, and the controls are on the back of it. If you don't have an easy way to walk back around your transmitter, like I, I'm always having to reach over, so if you can get one with a uh, little remote, you know, because times when you'll want to zoom in and zoom back, uh, the remote's really nice to have with, with, the, with the camera. Uh, for HDMI, you can get by with uh, basically any HDMI that you, almost any that you have on your computer. But you're going to find later on that uh, you probably need a little bit more horsepower for your HDMI and for streaming video. Uh, this card here I recommend. There's others in this same price range. Those are basically a gamer card using the, the uh, PCI-16 slot. Uh, but I have used and, uh, and had pretty good success with it with uh, a little stream laptop from uh, HP. It's a $200 laptop with HDMI out. You know, it's, you, you, those can be used, but you'll find later on that uh, if the, uh, it gets, gets sluggish or you've got a problems you want to run uh, 1080 or streaming video, uh, You'll, you'll, you'll find that HDMI really takes a lot of horsepower off your PC, so I would really recommend a card like this. So yeah, it's 90 bucks. But again, you can find this stuff used. This is a new price. Uh, but if you can find you know, a two or, three old, two or three year old gaming machine, those are uh, probably the best for uh, digital video. Now Hi-Dez does have a, a, a transmitter uh, and built into a camera, and Andy over here has used this, used this one right here, and has a configuration program like I showed you earlier, and they've got it in like a uh, security type uh, enclosure too as well. That's another way to go, uh, which means you wouldn't need, you know, one of those transmitters, but you'll find a lot more versatility uh, and more ways to have content. You know, ATV, digital ATV is a lot more than just showing a picture of each other. After a while, you get kind of tired of looking at each other's mugs. So you, you begin to look, see, well, what else can I do with this? So that's when the PC gets involved, and there it's almost, uh, you know, unlimited what, what you can do with it. Uh, I have some gear that provides test patterns, you know, and with HDMI, you can have an HDMI switch and you can just switch in different whatever your inputs are for your transmitter. Uh, here's an amplifier that works quite well. It's, it's built specifically for uh, high dis. Uh, it puts out about 10 or 11 watts and it's a, a full class A and it just works great. I mean I uh, bunch of us in St. Louis are using this amplifier. It's uh, built over in Europe. Uh, this same guy that builds these also does uh, a lot of testing for high des uh, and uh, he's, he's a well-trusted manufacturer over there. He's, he's just a one or two man operation but he does a great job on these amplifiers. It uses a Mitsubishi brick in it. Uh, it's actually a 60 watt brick uh, running 10 watts uh, but again, it's true Class A amplifier. So now we know uh, what works. Let's build an interface for it. I'm going to go fairly quickly on this because I want to do a little bit of demo here. But I'm going to show you uh, what's needed to build uh, an interface to work with these. As you'll notice on those boxes, there's no on and off switch. There's no PTT out thing. Hmm. Well, they were made again to just plug in, connect to a receiver, and you'll walk away from it and then the transmitter send, you know, that's the way they're made, so. But, it's easy to get around that, and uh, I'll show you that. So, here's um, a little schematic with just a little bit more info, and this is kind of a basic one. Uh, here's your power supply, uh, uh, here's a three-pole switch on the front, 
uh, DC relay, this is an automotive relay, about four or five bucks. And I'm going through one of these uh, digital meters that you've probably seen downstairs and you say, hmm, what did you power it with a nine volt? So these meters are kind of strange. You have to have isolated uh, DC for them, but a nine volt battery will last about 40 or 50 hours, so that's a lot of transmit time. It's only on. I feel it's a good idea to always monitor your current. Now you could use your power supply as well to monitor the current, but it's nice when you have this meter right in front of you. If something goes wrong, you're going to see it right quick. Uh, of course, it goes in the amplifier there. And the switching on to the right, we get this back again. Uh, over here, this is an RF relay. And I noticed, uh, I bought several today from a, from a ham down there selling them. Uh, they're SMA and they're good for like 10 to 20 uh, megahertz. megahertz and uh, they work very, very well. It's important, of course, to have good isolation between your transmit and uh, receive signal. So I really recommend uh, that type of relay. It could be a BNC or whatever. So. And switch it up to your antenna. It's got, uh, obviously got a fan on it because you're going to be uh, constantly drawing current when you're, on trans when you're transmitting because you're in class A. Now down at the bottom you'll see this DC to DC converter. And what, what that's for, and I'm switching it on as well in transmit, these RF relays are basically a military use most of them. So that's where you're going to find them in surplus cheap. Find them a 12 volt one is very, normally is hard to find and expensive, but these little converters, they're only about uh, four or five dollars, you know, they're, they're really cheap, so that's what I use. Here, here's a picture of it. Uh, this has got a heat sink that I got from Heat Sinks USA, but the uh, manufacturer of the amplifier provides now a heat sink uh, with it. You see, all it's got is a, well, this thing is, uh, all I have is a transmit switch, an on-the-air LED, uh, that's it. On the back you got transmit receive. You know, again, these can be BNCs because you can go from MCX or SMA to SMA or SMA, wh whatever you want uh, on the back, but I just kept it with SMAs. Uh, I have uh, complete documentation for this. Uh, i show exactly how to build it. It's ma made out of a bud, uh, bud box. Uh, there's four of it. Uh, I have all these uh, build material, all the drawings, are right down to the last nut and bolt how to build these. I've done about six different ones of these and I have them all documented. Uh, you can send me an email if you'd like to build something like this. I can send you all, all the plans to, to do that. Uh, basically to build it, I'm just going to go through it right quick. I mark the box. I drill the holes. Again, you don't have to have any, you can just use a hacksaw over here to cut this out, or if you don't want to use the amp uh, over here at the right, that's the amp meter. Don't need that. Uh, I obtained an amplifier. I think this picture, you can't hardly see it, but it's got a black anodized heat sink on the back of it here. This is his latest one right here. Uh, here's one where I set it, had to cut it out, put the uh, amplifier in the top. Here's all the parts. Here's that little converter I was talking about, the nuts, bolts, screws. I use a, a real ultra-fast uh, rectifier up here in case you might turn the reverse of polarity. It won't blow out things. It'll blow the fuse out. So that's well worth the effort. And then it's got a ham radio uh, part number. Let's see. Here's the uh, relay down here at the, at the bottom. With this. Uh, this is typically what they look like. Uh, there's a number of different ones. You just need to verify the voltage. Uh, they'll all go up above uh, several uh, gigahertz, so I mean, you, you don't have any problems uh, with them, I don't think. Um, here, here's that DC to DC converter, 28 volts. I got these originally, which really didn't need uh, both sides of this, but here's one down here for $2, and that'll run that those relays just fine. Here's the cables that I mentioned. These are from three to six dollars from eBay. Uh, you can buy buy those in all different lengths, uh, you know, up to several feet. 
Uh, I, had to, I made a little bracket to hold the relay, but again, you could just stand it off with the holes uh, that are actually in the relay itself. So very easy to mount, you know, the relay. I apologize for this. I don't know what's, what's going on here. But anyway, I know I got it, again, fully documented to show exactly, you know, how to build this thing. I made that just a piece of aluminum bent over in a vise. That's all it is. And uh, here's with all the parts mounted right here. Cable, so it's uh, ready to wire up. And uh, there's, you know, there's the uh, completed wiring. Um, one thing about this, I use power poles and also the fan on the top. I use a little amphenol connector. So you can just pull that apart. You want to go to 23 centimeters. Uh, have you another bud box at the top? You can. He, he makes amplifiers for 23 centimeters and just plug it in. So uh, you can use uh, the main switching uh, and just change the amplifier. Uh, here's a couple of them running. Uh, when you're receiving, it has a LED here that's normally red when it's not locked, and when the sync, uh, signal's locked, uh, turn green. This is a little bit earlier one. Uh, now, I, this, this is the channel that you're on, like zero, zero. Uh, this one, uh, you couldn't control with switches, but the later ones that I'm passing around uh, do. Uh, and same way with transmitter. When it goes into transmitter, outputs power, the light goes from red to green. So you have a status of what's going on there. Uh, here it is on the bench after I uh, built this. I don't see we don't have, I was hoping we'd have an amplifier here, but I see, I see we don't even have a mic. So anyway, I won't, you won't be able to hear the audio here, but I'll just run it. Uh, again, okay, I'm using a, um, I'm running DVBT right now. I think this is at 720, yeah. Uh, we're actually using that, uh, the interface that I just built. This one had a couple more options on it, but uh, it's showing that it's, it's actually uh, transmitting, receiving. Uh, this power supply uh, from MCM I found works quite well. Uh, I've seen them down to 79 bucks, and they're they're good for about 25 amps. So uh, they've been very very reliable. Uh, they're a switcher, but uh, they have very low noise, and they work just fine. Oh, okay, so antennas. Uh, this company called Old Antenna Labs has been making antennas for uh, analog forever. Uh, they have a five and a ten element. Um, they work quite well, very broad bandwidth. Uh, the other one from Directive Systems, K1FO, now SK, but his company had been taken over by another one. Uh, that's probably one of the better antennas. M squared makes them too. Gives you a lot of gain, 25 elements. Again, those aren't very big. I mean, you can rotate them with a, you know, the cheapest TV rotator work just fine. So here's one uh, the guy that I work. He's he's about I don't know does. 10 or 15 miles away, he's in a very poor location, but he does quite well with, you know, just a simple Yagi uh, like that one there. Again, uh, if you need, and I, I, again, I would recommend a, a preamp. Uh, don't have to have it, but uh, here's another one. This one's built in Russia of all places, but it works quite well on ATV, and it has a, uh, a bypass relay in it, so you can put it up you know, at your antennas where it should be. It's good for 75 watts. It has what's called a bias T in it. If you have a bias T at, at your uh, at shack, then you can just run power up the center of the coax. Otherwise, you can just run a pair of twist, you know, twisted pair up to control this. Again, it only draws 75 uh, mils. And the receiver actually has uh, a bias T in it. So you would need a bias T, I'm sorry, at, at this end, at the uh, antenna end, to, to be able to do that without running a, a pair of wires. Now the other option is works pretty good. You know, it depends on the length of your coax, is just use a down east microwave uh, uh, preamp. This one works 
works good. There's several guys use those. They're $55 in the kit. Again, I'm talking about optional stuff here. It all depends on the signal, whether you're going to try to work DX or, you know, you know what's your cup of tea. Uh, in a metro area, probably don't need it. So here's a, kind of a configuration. Um, and see, I've got a, an HD TV connected to the uh, HD uh, or a, HV120 receiver. Uh, that's connected, of course, to the antenna relay, the amplifier, back up through the transmitter. And the transmitter, I've got a laptop uh, connected it, uh, internal camera, or you can use a Logitech uh, 920, uh, 15 amp power supply. All this stuff over here is optional. These uh, die away, or however you pronounce this, walk me to the CN100s, they work very good. I mean, they're. I'm surprised uh, how accurate they are. So, uh, again, the amplifier is compatible with all of this high des transmitters and receivers. I'm only showing you what I've found that works quite well. Uh, again, I have all this stuff like this is documented, and I'll be glad to share it with you. Uh, this is my station now. I, I, I've I've had a few changes to it, but you can see I use an HDMI switch here. So I'm, I've got an EDVR, which is my security uh, system in my home, and outside I've got eight cameras, so I can switch those in. Uh, it's, again, it's more content. Uh, this is going in the transmitter here. I've got a camcorder hooked up, you know, an HDMI out. I've got what's called a Geffen toolbox, which is an HD pattern generator. Uh, up here I'm using a my station mic, a Heil through a Behringer mixer, and I'm running that in the line end of my uh, uh, laptop. Also, HDMI has what they call inserters. You can put them in series with your HDMI line, and then you can insert audio uh, with those as well. That's another way to do it. Um, I've got a Logitech uh, camera connected to it. Uh, over here is the receiver. Again, going to a television set. It's it's. You probably find it's best if you keep your uh, tele uh, have a television, separate television. Just keep it on your receiver all the time. Because remember, this stuff runs full duplex, so you're able to see your signal uh, all the time. You go to transmit, you see what you're sending out, which is, of course, they're very advantageous. A couple of different. I've got switching here. You can buy these coaxial switches. I bought one um, yesterday for ten bucks. It'll switch up to. 10 different uh, outputs, you know, SMA and, uh, I'm sorry, six outputs. So you can have, uh, you know, if you, if you want to, buy different uh, cameras from high des uh, for, again, for have more cameras in your, your shack. I mean, this is really overkill, but, you know, over time you just start adding stuff. So that's what, it, that's what I got into. And, it, you know, that adds more stuff to do. Um, we're not going to be able to hear the audio here, but I'm, uh, what I'm going to show you is a video that's being sent uh, by that guy with that little old 10 element Yagi. He's about 15 miles away. He's running about you know, 8 or 9 watts of power. And uh, uh, he's running HDMI. He's running one of these transmitter receivers, I think an older model. And he's going to be sending his desktop. But on that desktop, he's got other video running including this uh, H, uh, this uh, 920 camera from VTEC, and you'll see that it's, it's pretty high, high resolution. It's, it's near 1080 when it's running that way. I don't have, uh, the, the other way, as I mentioned, is using uh, Windows 10 and their camera software, which will give you a full screen. Uh, that works quite well, too, with the, with the 920 camera. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on a camera. Uh, and again, that, that's all being sent without uh, HDMI. Let's see. Well, so we're going to run this. Let's go find that motion. So here's, here's his desktop, and he's, he's just selecting a file here. And he's going to show us the other thing is full motion. I mean, this is 30 to 60 frames per second uh, full motion video. So he's going to run something out of Of course, this is for demonstration only. But you can see the motion going on here. We'll see a little bit more here. I know Andy's concerned 
is, is motion. Now you see he's got video going up here, he's got video going down here, this is his whiteboard and uh, you're going to see a race here in a minute. So. Now this is uh, what he's sending here is uh, just a file and it's out you know it's output to the uh, I'm sorry he is using HDMI to this uh, uh, transmitter here or but I want what this, I'm doing I'm just demonstrating how well this works and the motion you know there's no jitter the colors perfect and they're off to the races Yeah, yeah, the Corvette one. Corvette run, so. Hey, he's talking a little bit about his station. See, he's running an ID over here. This, again, this is all software out of Windows 10. This is the software, uh, Logitech software. He can make that full screen. Uh, this is his audio, you know, showing down here. The software sees the ITE. That's the uh, chipset that's inside the uh, transmitter. And this, this, this actually, he can run uh, video here as well. Uh, the guys get really innovative with their IDs. Oh. Yeah. So always a good picture. Uh, we're running on a 440, 439 megahertz. Picture of my shack, and we're still using the old Indian to. Uh, uh, here, here's my station. Uh, I'm using both the volt and the amp meter, and over here I've got a, a rotary switch for different uh, uh, RF inputs. Um, there's my, my. I'm using the switch down here to turn things off and on. Like uh, some of the earlier stuff ran on. Uh, Five volts. So I just use an, uh, a, a USB switch to do that. Here's the uh, stream. Uh, again, this is you know relatively low cost laptop. Uh, it will. It's not the best, but to get started, uh, again fairly you know not a low, lot of processing power here. You know it can be done with a relatively low cost uh, laptop. So. On the web, where to go is uh, highdes.com.tw, uh, that's Taiwan. Uh, here's the guy with the amplifiers. And most importantly here, to get started is to read this guy's application notes. Uh, they're very, very good on ATV. It gives you an, uh, a lot of information on how to get started, uh, what works and what doesn't work. He's even got a plan in there for a repeater as well. I've got some information on my website as well. Uh, Digital ATV has got a group, Yahoo group. Uh, there's a bunch more there. Uh, let's see, what do we got till, do we have till just 10 till? I think I'll try to run something. Uh, Anyway, th this book here I really hi highly recommend called uh, Digital Television. Uh, it's written by a French guy, but his English is really good. There's just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, ATV Quarterly Magazine. Uh, this is a, a free publication. It uh, comes out once a month. So uh, Now, here's the uh, $10 option. Is this right here? If, if you guys want to try this with uh, 6 megahertz bandwidth, uh, this will work. The, the problem with these dongles are they're not very sensitive. Uh, but they will work with uh, VLC uh, software and this for receive. So what, that's what we're going to try to do in St. Louis is run 6 megahertz so guys can use these $10 ones to kind of get them going, you know, to see if this stuff works. So. Uh, that is that is an option to run this. Um, so that's a, that's about all I have on that. Uh, I'll try to show you here right quick. Uh, I want to take the uh, DVB dongle here. I'm going to put it in this extender. I want to put uh, 
some kind of a transmitter on. You can run these things wide open if you want to. I mean, they seem to be awfully rugged. Uh, close this. Plug in, plugging it in. Yeah, this yeah, this is the full duplex transmitter receiver and the DVB dongle. Okay, I'm going to run some of the software that I mentioned. Uh, we'll run this TS player. This is uh, running some files that have been converted to transport files, and then we're going to run this this viewer. Uh, this is really taxes a PC to run both of these programs at the same time, but you know it can be done. I think we're going to kind of, let's see, I'm going to hit run here. Sorry, I don't have much time. There's the picture popping up. That's a 720 picture here. That's me in, me in the ham shack here. Uh, you've got really good color. The resolution's only 720 on this one. This is this was using a, an earlier camera from high des or the 920, I think. Uh, anyway, it's, on, it's only 720, but I'll give you an idea what it looks Yeah, 720 by 480. It tells you in the frames per second down here. Yeah, I was just making this. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's... Huh? Yeah, I'm transmitting receiving right here. What we're seeing there, you're getting on that antenna. Pardon me? What we're seeing there, you're receiving on that antenna. Uh, I was re actually this was a recording a guy made of me, and, I, and and he sent me that transport file. I'm just playing it back, but I'm playing it back and transmitting it in at the same time. You'll see the sync on here. There's a little blue LED that tells you that the signal's been synced. So, so all we need is a receiver over here to hear you. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have a buddy. You know, <laughs> two of you got to get started. Yeah. Yeah. Start. yeah. Yeah. There's not. There. Where's a Texas friend? There used to be a big ATV group here. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's trying to find them, you know. Uh, all I can say with that. Uh, Anybody here <coughs> Fort Worth? Lake Worth? Uh, I think we're about out of time.